the difference between this 3D print and this one? is a single setting. Can you tell what it is? Hey everybody, I'm Joe and I'm working on a project right now. I'm making a fully 3D printed set of tableware, the sort that you would eat food off of. And I'm sure that people are already warming up the comments to say 3D printing is not food safe. Well, we'll discuss that in a future video. So obligatory mention to subscribe, ring the bell if you want to be notified of that discussion when it happens. But this discussion is a little bit more about the materials and the printing of these tall, thin objects. I chose to print these in some transparent PETG from my friends at Yusu. It's good PETG and I chose transparent because it's as untreated as possible. But the thing about PETG is one, you've got to print it hotter than PLA, and two, it's a little bit more flexible. That was by design. It can take, you know, PLA would snap at this point, but PETG is just kind of bending with the stresses. Also, the higher temp of it means that I can put it through the washer and things like that. However, I ran into a couple of problems. At first, my prints would just fail at a certain point. Then I could get them past that point with a few settings changed and, and eventually I finally figured out how to get as clean a print as possible. The thing about this is, if you're new to 3D printing, you are inheriting a legacy of development and innovation that you might not even be aware of. Well, for instance, when 3D printing first started, it was slow. Not that I thought anything of it at the time. That was just the speed that you 3D printed at. See, what happened was we had motors and we told the motors go from here to here and we just told it to go at its maximum speed. But, you know, this was an amazing time. There were lots of people coming up with amazing innovations and sharing those with the world for free. It was a great time. Somebody back then realized, you know what? We could do acceleration. See, instead of telling the motor to go from point A to point B as fast as possible, tell it to start going as fast as it could safely at that point, and then go a little bit faster and a little bit faster and a little bit faster. And, and this is tricky to pull off because you have to tell the motor to go faster, but you also have to tell the extrusion to go faster along with it. And you have to coordinate the movement of those two things. But once we could do that, we could rev our motors up to speeds never before seen. I remember the first time that I turned this machine on and instead of doing our normal 10 millimeters per second, a one centimeter per second, I cranked it up to a dangerous 60 millimeters per second. And it took it like a champ. It went from the slow, laborious 3D printing process that it normally does to just casually almost printing way way faster and it was exciting you know another innovation that really kind of changed the entire landscape of 3d printing was pla back when i started we used abs all the time because that's what you manufactured things in and then somebody said you know abs ABS was designed for injection molding. You put it into a mold, it gets just a little bit cool, and then it shrinks and falls off. And that shrinkage is kind of a problem when you don't want the bottom of your print to shrink before you get to the top of it. What if we found a new material? What if we found a material that didn't need as much energy to print with, that printed at a slightly lower melting point? What if we found one that didn't shrink? as much? What if we found one that we might not even need a heated build plate at all to keep it on the build plate and PLA entered into the parlay of 3D printing. All of a sudden we needed a little fan blowing on it to keep it cool as it was printing, which was a mind blow, but we didn't need to enclose our 3D printers. We could have them be open frames. And I say that like there weren't open frame printers before. There definitely were, but now this became the viable standard for 3D printers that everybody could do and there would be no downsides to it. And 
Whoa, talk about changing the game. And the thing about these advances is once we took a step forward, we didn't retreat. Some of those advances, uh, somewhere along the way, we lost something. We didn't realize that we were losing something until we looked back later. For instance, back when I first started, I 3D printed some minis created by Dutch Mogul for his Pocket Tactics game. And these minis, looking back on them, we should not have been able to print them. Tiny, thin handles of the spears or maces that monsters were holding with big balls on the top. But somehow, those early 3D printers handled that like a champ. But when I tried them again some years later, I couldn't figure out why, but they were failing. It was the speed. 3D printers going faster and faster and faster meant that things wiggled a little bit too much, that it just jerked around and jerked the print and things didn't hold still the way that they were supposed to, or it didn't have time to cool sufficiently so that it could take the next layer without being a little bit too melty. Speeding up had been the thing that took us from being able to 3D print amazingly detailed objects to not so good. And this brings us back to the spoon. Yes, it was in fact slowing down to 3D print that took it from a crappy print that looks a little bit like a feather for no good reason to being a relatively good, solid, and pretty 3D print. But I had to try a lot of things on the way to do that, including, well, at first I was trying to print the knife and fork and spoon all together, but I had to print them one at a time. I had to turn down the speed settings, but I also had to turn down the minimum layer temp to make sure that it was letting each layer cool. Z-Hop also ended up being a huge save for this, but overall, slowing down and making the 3D print take more time, especially per layer, is what stopped it from, as it was getting taller and thinner, wiggling too much or not being solid enough or any of the other problems. Now you might wonder, well, couldn't we just have the slicers somehow look at the part and say, it's getting tall, it's getting thin, it's getting very small and doesn't have enough time to cool. Couldn't we have the slicer just speed up or slow down the print as it goes? Well, I would like to introduce you to a technique called velocity painting. This was created by a very innovative maker whose name I can't remember, but we'll put on the screen here. That's him. And he figured out that if the print goes faster or slower at certain points, and especially with certain materials, such as um, transparent or semi-transparent pet G, that the surface quality would take on a completely different appearance and you could use that to paint with. So maybe it wouldn't be a good idea to have the slicer decide that part of it gets printed one way and part of it gets printed in another. Actually, that could be kind of cool too, but nevertheless, it's really good to just slow down the whole print. This idea kind of runs counter to the effort to go faster and faster and faster. We want our 3D printers to finish right now. We want what it's doing right now and you know, the thing is, think about this for a second. Your 3D printer isn't printing a sandcastle. It's not going to wash away the moment the next wave comes in. This is something that you can and probably will have in your possession for years. And so if you're 3D printing something that is going to last, what's wrong with taking just a little bit more time to do it? Of course, I'm not saying that innovation, pushing things, and going faster is a bad thing. I fully expect that we're going to have 3D printers akin to the replicator that we can just look at and say, hey, give me this thing, and boom, it's in our hands in a matter of seconds. That's going to happen. But at the same time, if going fast means that you lose the ability to print certain things, things that are tall and thin or, or flexible, then don't be afraid to take a little bit more time to do it right. This, this isn't a general rule. This is just one more tool in your arsenal. So there we go. And I hope that these tips and tricks will help you 3D print better in the future. Just remember, if you're 3D printing something and you're having a hard time of it and it's tall and thin, try slowing down your print. Try turning on Z-Hop. Try printing 
only one of them at a time or maybe try printing two and see if that makes a difference. That's everything for this video. I hope that this helps you. Thank you very much for watching. Before we go, check out this cool project on the What You Make In channel on my Discord. Why don't you stop by and check out what other cool projects are there. And hey, if you share something you've done, maybe you'll see it in a future video too. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there.